who is the most appropriate patient for treatment with ipilimumab and nivolumab? Now that we have uh, had FDA approval of this combination for some time, can you discuss the data itself as well as uh, the appropriateness or the patient selection for this therapy? Rana? Yeah, so we're, we're all familiar with uh, Checkmate 214. It was a large randomized phase three trial where patients were randomized to the combination of nivolumab and ipilimumab versus sunitinib in the frontline space. Um, the primary endpoint was to look at outcomes in patients who had um, intermediate and uh, poor risk disease. And um, recently presented at GU AFCO by Dr. Uh, Tanier was the updated long-term follow-up with a minimum of 42 months, um, which is the longest time that we have of uh, outcome follow-up from any of the uh, frontline trials. The initial uh, data were presented with a follow-up time of around 17 and a half months. Then there was a 30 month follow-up and now we see the 42 months follow-up where we continue to see a statistically significant improvement in overall survival um, in the intermediate and poorest patients with a survival of 47 months compared to 26.6 months. And the hazard ratio holds steady at uh, 0.66. Um, with the 30-month hazard ratio also at 0.66. And so it's exciting to see that with longer-term follow-up that these that the benefit of nevo ipi is uh, persistent. Um, additionally, we continue to see a tail on the curve of uh, people who uh, remain on treatment or maybe are off treatment but yet haven't started their subsequent second-line therapy and are reaping the benefit of um, uh, the combination. And I think... Um, we're beginning to see these long, durable responses. Um, you know, we're always leery of the word cure, but we've all seen patients in our clinic who have just been many years out, um, uh, either still on therapy or off therapy, not on their second line therapy and doing well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in the oncology world where, you know, even median improvement of three months is something that we occasionally get excited about. A median survival improvement of 21 months is pretty impressive. How durable are these responses with epinevo? And can you tell, is it only in the responders that you see it? Matt, can you discuss that? It's a great question. And so the, the data that we have so far from this Checkmate 214 study is around 85% of patients in complete response will maintain response. Um, if you look at all responders, at they showed at two years, three years, and then four years, around 66% of patients who initially responded were maintaining response. So that's a good fraction of patients. Um, in terms of predicting patients that would have a durable PR, I think that's a little bit tricky, though there are some suggestions that patients that are getting below the threshold of 60, 70, or 80% response are doing very, uh, in a similar fashion to the patients in a complete response. And there's been several um, posters and, and, and abstracts that have suggested um, that they may be a special subgroup, kind of like in multiple myeloma, where they have very good partial response. Um, I would say in my own clinical practice, where I worry about in terms of sites of relapse is particularly the brain. And so there are patients that that is the site of relapse. And so I, I make sure for my patients that are doing well that I do keep a close eye on their brain at least annually. Anybody else has comments about the response uh, predicting for a durable remission? I think we all have patients like this in our clinics um, that are doing very well uh, with a very deep partial response or a complete response. I think the critical clinical question to address um, for these patients is when should we or could we hold therapy, um, understanding that the side effects from immunotherapies can really occur at any time. And so, you know, is there a point where uh, we should discontinue treatment? And we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. 